Jing Liu is finally here after so many months of waiting. I'm sure those of you who really wanted her is really happy to have her on your account. While obviously for those of you who are still trying, I do wish you good luck on that. Now guys, today since Jing Liu is released, we're having a specific very in-depth Jing Liu guide so that it helps you to build Jing Liu as efficient as possible as well as know how to play her in the best way. So without further ado guys, let us just dive right in. First off, we'll dive in depth into her skills and kit so that you are aware of how she currently performs and what exactly does she do. So for Jing Liu's skill and kit, her E will be basically deals ice damage toward her enemies and obtain one stack of what's called Sezishi. Her burst will also be dealing massive ice damage toward your targeted enemies while also additionally dealing decent ice damage toward adjacent targets as well and also giving her another stack of Sezishi. But the most important thing within her kit is gonna be her talents for whenever she has two stacks of Sezishi, she enters what's called Spectral Transmigration State where it increases her crit rate by a lot and now her skills becomes enhanced. So whenever you use this skill, she will be consuming all of your other allies HP to increase Jing Liu's attack. So in other words, if you're using character have high max HP, Jing Liu will be able to get even more buff from this talent. So if something that you want to consider whenever you're building Jing Liu's team, do know that whenever you use this skill, it will consume one stack of Sezishi and also it won't be consuming skill points, which is a pretty good thing. For Jing Liu's first passive talent, whenever she is in her enhanced E skill state, she will have effect resistance increased by 35%. Passive 2 is that whenever she uses her E skill, her action will be advanced forward by 10%. And for her third passive, whenever she is in her E enhanced state, her ultimate damage will be increased by 20%. So overall, that's basically Jing Liu's skills and kit. I would say that it's quite quite straightforward, you're basically using her normal E skill as well as her ult so that she gets the CG stacks to get her enhanced E skill and then after that you just basically spam her E skill while keeping in mind that you want to have her teammate with high max HP being next to her so that she can maximize her talent buffing. Though I usually do recommend you to not use your ultimate whenever it is available because you want to save it until she turns into her transmigration state where she gets a decent number of ultimate damage increase. Now talking about her burst as I have just mentioned guys, here's a big big gameplay tips whenever you are using Jing Liu is that there's a reason why you want to save her burst until she turns into her transmigration state or her enhanced E skill state because using her burst gives her one stack of CCG. Therefore using her burst during that time allows you to have at least one more turn for her enhanced E skill which is really beneficial for her. Not to mention if you have character like Ting guys where she helps Jing Liu with burst regenerations. I have had scenarios where I was able to do two bursts during her enhanced E skill allowing me to have at least four turns of transmigration state for Jing Liu. So those are basically Jing Liu's skills and kit. However regarding that there have been two questions that were frequently asked regarding Jing Liu and we will be discussing them right here and the first one is that does her HP decrease affect your team a lot? And guys I would say the answer is you usually a no. You're pretty much comfortable using Jing Liu as long as you have a very good healer on your team which I believe most of us do. Now the question is a little bit different if you are planning to only use defender or preservation character like you know Jipart or Fusuan on your team because of course those character especially Jipart has no access to healing capability whatsoever so it is very hard to use them along with Jing Liu but for Fusuan it is quite a little bit easier to use her and also most comfortable as well but of course we'll be discussing more about Fusuan during the team cop section and then the second question is does she require to have high HP member running alongside with her all the time or in other words is it very important to try and find high HP scaling team member to run alongside with Jing Liu and I would say guys it's more important for you to try and build a team that is more synergistic with her so that you know she has decent buffing helping out with everything that she needs in terms of attack increase and that's going to be a more important thing especially most of your sustain that you run alongside with Jing Liu guys would have around 4k plus HP most of the time so that should be pretty good and also any of your support character who isn't really dealing too much damage can actually build with an HP percentage 
Orb, which of course we'll be discussing more about that in her team comp section as well. Moving on guys, let's discuss about best build for Jing Liu. First off, we'll look into her relic sets and stuff. Now for a four piece guys, I just recommend you to go with the Glacial Forest because of course that's quite literally the best four piece that Jing Liu has right now. As for the planar ornament set, the best two piece would be Rutilant Arena that increased your crit rate by 8% and whenever her crit rate reach 70% or higher, her base attack and skill damage is increased by 20%. This is her generally best two-piece planar, so try and go farm for this two-piece whenever you can. Other slightly less impactful options but overall still very good is first going to be the space ceiling station and another one would be inert salsato but also increase her crit rate by 8% and whenever her crit rate reach 50% or higher her ultimate and follow-up attack damage increased by 15%. As for the relics specific stats Guys, for the body, of course, I recommend you to go for crit ratio depending on whichever stats you are missing. The boot is going to be speed. The orb is going to be ice damage. And then lastly, you can go for attack percentage. Moving on to her best light cone, guys. Of course, her BIS option is generally going to be her best in slots. But more than that, guys, her light cone is also universally good. So if you do happen to grab her light cone, you can technically use it on most or all of the destruction character coming down the line because right now it pretty much fits every destruction character other than that guys the other two five star options of blades and imbibitor lunai also fits her really really well if you happen to have a spare one on your account or you want to switch between usage of the weapon that is perfect for jing liu as well moving on to the free to play and the four star options first off the secret vow is going to be her best four star in slot other than that we have the free to play five star option which is the Eon, her second best option, I would say, pretty good as well. Obviously, if you do have its refinement, it's gonna get even better as you move on. The most, guys, is really good too. However, it is a lot better if you have high refinement. Otherwise, I just recommend you to go with the Secret Vow. Something irreplaceable as well as nowhere to run are both okay option too if you really don't have the other options we have just mentioned before, but obviously, they aren't as good. So it is always best to try and go for the higher ranking options for the higher damage capability from Jing Liu. Moving on guys, let's discuss her Eidolons so that any of you who is planning to go for that can have an understanding about it. For E1 guys, generally really good because you do have a lot of crit damage increase after using your ult and enhanced skill. But further than that guys, during single target situation, the damage can increase up to 40% which is really really high. However, outside of that or whenever you're in group situation, it will be only around 78% increased damage so this is best used when you're up against solo boss fight. E2 guys is okay I would say not that great but it does give her a lot of front load damage. E4 gives her the ability to drain more HP from your teammates so that she gets even more attack increase from this way and of course guys E6 is very good because it makes her ultimately more fun to play as she can now nearly have full uptime during her state and also also buff her damage by a lot too. So yes, E6 just make Jing Liu a lot, lot more powerful. Overall, guys, I would say her Eidolon is pretty good. Now, if you are planning to invest into her, I just recommend you to go for either an E1 or all the way invested up to E6. Now, of course, most of her Eidolons really do buff her damage. But if you can only invest in moderately, it's more important for you to try and go for her Light Cone first before thinking about going for a Dolans, right? Moving on guys, we get into the fun part which is going to be her team building and now I'll be discussing and going through pretty much most of her team options as well as free to play options as well. Now for Jing Liu's team, what you want to know is that if you have a Pela at E4, she's going to be an absolutely valuable character on Jing Liu's team because E4 gives Pela the ability to decrease enemies' ice resistance by 12% and that is absolutely valuable for Jing Liu. And other than that guys, another valuable member on Jing Liu's team would be Bronya. So yes, as you guess it, one of the best team that Jing Liu has right now would be Jing Liu, Bronya and Pela. This is the overall best team core for most consistent damage with little to no drawback guys if you have these character built. Now do note guys, as I have mentioned before, your support character like Bronya and Pela can actually go with HP percentage up so that they have more HP for Jing Liu to 
drain from your party members and then allows her to have even more attack buff from that. Another good team that you can run is going to be Jing Liu, Bronya and Ting Yun. This actually gives Jing Liu more damage than the first team but the SP issue in these teams are real guys. You will most likely running out of SP on the first cycle unless you have E1, S1, Bronya. The reason for this is generally you have to use Ting Jun E skill most of the time so that the up times of Ting Jun skills actually match when Jing Liu goes into her enhanced E skill state for it to be buffed by Ting Yun. So that's something you have to keep in mind. Now guys, Yu Kong and Guo are definitely two considerations that you can slot into the team too and can both be on the same team if you don't have for example E4 Pela or Bronia. Other than that, you can run Jing Liu, Pela and Ting Jun. This is technically the most free to play options for Jing Liu's team. You do trade a bit of damage but it's significantly easier to play than the first two as you basically have no SP issue guys and you can run more SP heavy sustain like Lynx and Bailu with no issue at all. Of course we'll be discussing about this whenever we touch on sustained character for the team. And then if you have a very invested account you can go with Jing Liu, Bronya and Blade. Best version of dual carry you just damage boost whoever you favors the weakness. So if your enemies have win weakness you go with Blade and if it's Ice it will be with Jing Liu. Another free to play option guys would be Jing Liu, Asta and Pei La. Now this is going to be giving you a lot of attack buff to Jing Liu and it's free to play as well guys so if you do have Asta built you can consider going with that. If you're someone who is considering going with Silver Wolf then Jing Liu, Silver Wolf, Pei La, and then Fu Xuan or Lynx would be kind of good however guys this team isn't going to be as competitive as the other option we have mentioned before. So yes overall if you can you can just save Silver Wolf for another team of your account. Now moving on to sustain choice. The reason why I separate this is because you can technically choose any of the sustain and put it on Jing Liu's team. First one would be Locha, definitely going to be the best as Locha is a character that almost never use any skill point. Next is going to be Lynx, Natalia and Bailu. Three of these characters are generally on the same level so you can put them in depending on whoever has been built and have a free slot. Fuzhuan is a very very good consideration guys because having Fuzhuan on Jing Liu's team as the sustainer generally results in the best in terms of damage buff everything for Jing Liu for she has access to that 12% crit rate increase. The biggest problem of course is will her elemental burst healing be enough when Jing Liu is technically constantly draining HP from everyone. And yes I would say that of course if you're able to clear out your enemies fast then definitely Fu Xuan being on the team is never going to be a problem for Jing Liu. For from our experience Fu Xuan being on Jing Liu's team can technically last for at least 9 cycles. Obviously the more HP Fu Xuan has as well together with her light cone would definitely result in more cycles surviving. But you can also minimize that if you happen to have the Lando's choice where there's a higher chance that the enemies will be targeting Fu Xuan directly helping your team to have more surviving capability. And so guys those would be most of Jing Liu's best teams option right there. I try my best to cover as many teams as I can for you guys. But obviously if you do have any other additional teams that you want to talk about feel free to leave it down in the comment section and we can discuss right there. And so from after everything that we have discussed and all the testing that we have on Jing Liu I want to touch a bit on Jing Liu's pros and cons so that we now have an overall absolute idea of how Jing Liu is performing in the current patch which is that guys she has access to extremely potent AoE damage and also pretty good in single target situation as well. As we've discussed she has a very good variety of light cone options that you can use both with 5 star and free to play options and also for the relic and ornament too you have a few options to go with without losing too much DPS. During the team options we have seen that Jing Liu is a character that universally works with most of the supports in the game and her teams are usually skill point friendly as well which is also a plus whereas there have been many characters that use up a lot of skill point and a lot harder for you to manage. Plus guys she is a character that has a lot of room to grow because I believe that there will be more character being released 
down the road that supports Jing Liu more specifically. But Jing Liu's cons, guys, she actually doesn't really have that much. First off, is assuming the worst case scenario, Jing Liu may suffer from energy issues at time because, as we've known, her elemental burst is very important for damage. But while that's of course is not as important, and also regarding the fact that Jing Liu's drain HP from the team, as we have mentioned, as long as you have good healer on your team, it's not going to be a big problem. The only one, of course, if you're running sustain that doesn't heal you, and of course, that is mostly going to be you know, like shoulder that doesn't have access to healing. So, yes, as pretty much Jing Liu doesn't have a lot of downside as I have seen at this point in time. So, from everything that she is capable of, we've already know that there are a lot of destruction character within her niche in terms of DPS character at this point in time. How is she currently competing with other character in similar role, you know, especially like Blade, Imbibitor Lunai or Clara. And I would say guys, Jing Liu is a very very good character on par with these character or sometimes even better in certain situations because she has access to very very good AoE damage and on top of that she can deal pretty decent single target as well. Well, but of course that E0 is not going to be as good as Zile or Imbibitor Lunai with single target. However, if you do have her at E1, she basically eats up single target as well, making her one of the best DPS character in the game right now. So with knowing all of this, guys, one big final question would be her future potential. Because of course, sometimes power crap in Honkai Star Rail is a thing, and some of us may be scared of that. However, guys, I have to say in Jin Liu's case, she has really, really high potential as currently she's still doesn't have a set in stone team whereas we know there will be a lot more character being released in the future and where someone who have access to helping her with a lot more attack buff as well as energy increase which is where many other harmonies and nihility character down the line would be a potential for our team as well of course definitely is something we have to wait on that but currently guys i would say jing liu is very good a lot of team potential for her to be using already and you guys should be able to have a lot of fun when using Jing Liu. So guys, that should be everything I have to say for Jing Liu at this point in time. I hope that the video have been able to help you guys out a lot. If you do have any question, leave it down in the comment section and I or some other lovely Honkai Star Rail player will get to you there. If you are new to the channel guys, don't forget to subscribe as I post a lot of Honkai Star Rail videos that is going to be very helpful for you and if you are playing Genshin Impact 2, I am very much specialized in Genshin Impact as well. I really appreciate you guys sticking with me till this part of the video guys and with that, I wish you a super day and i will catch you on my next video 